Hey guys, Jordan here. Today we are looking at something absolutely ridiculous. Every now and again, I'll get an email asking if I want to look at something crazy. This is one of them. This is the MSI Supreme 5090 Liquid Cooled Edition, retailing for you know 26, 2700 pounds uh, at the time of filming. And yeah, I'm gonna get this on open and uh, let's have a bit of fun. Getting straight into it. Let's not waste any time. Card first and foremost. Let's just take this out. Maybe not quite as thick as you'd imagine, but we do have a 360mm radiator attached to it that's underneath that I'll show you in a minute. So we've also got an adapter in there as well. So your four eight pins to 12 volt high power. Also got the yellow on there, as you can see. So you can see when it's fully inserted into the card. Also got a couple of Velcro cable ties in there as well. So let's try and see how this opens out. So there you go, there's that extra bit. And here we have the radiator underneath so the 360 and there we go that's the whole thing if you're wondering about the actual length of this tube it's 450 millimeters so quite a lot of length there to play with if you are planning to use this in a build for the three of you that can afford to do so so now we can have a closer look at the actual card itself just quickly mention this is a press rotating sample as well so a few things may be a bit different you may get some extra bits and bobs in the box but this one obviously gets passed around and sometimes things go missing so that's why this one is like this and there's also no pills either because obviously that's been done previously so looking closer at the card we have got the supreme logo this will light up with rgb there's also a little part on the corner we have got a back plate on there as well there is a pill on there but i'm not going to worry about that one and then we also got a silent and a gaming mode option there are different clocks on the card depending on the mode you choose as well. So for gaming, we're going to have a boost clock of 2,565 and then silent 2,512. So it's not really that far apart because there are two totally different options. Now, like I mentioned, a little bit thinner than you might expect, but of course we have got the radiator attached to it. It is a two and a half slot card, but it is slightly wider than you might expect for a traditional card. So just get the tape measure and give you some dimensions. So that's 135 millimeters. Then length is going to be 280 mil then for thickness two and a half slots but that's going to be 50 mil thick on the thickest part of the card there so one of the things to mention we have got 21,760 cuda cores i think most people will be using a 5090 for some kind of creative work so that's obviously going to help you there then we've got other things like 30 gigabytes of memory that's going to be running at 28 gigabytes per second and that's on a 512 bit memory bus let's have a look at the radiator we've got all of the cables for the fans connected together as well as you can see it just looks like a daisy chain that runs down the tube into the card so no extra adapters or anything needed which is nice that's one thing i was wondering about being that a case generally has enough case fans and cables and connections and things i was wondering how this is going to work so it's nice that it's all just incorporated no extra cable mess to deal with fairly standard kind of radiator configuration there as well i can see that there are some fins under the screw holes as well so make sure you don't screw those in too tight on the side of the card we have got a single fan there looks to be about 80 millimeters of course it's not going to do as much as the 360 will but obviously will give you a little bit more benefit for some heat dissipation a lovely brushed side on that supreme I think it's just certainly the kind of card you're going to want a vertical mount as well. Going to the end of the card for our outputs, we have got three display ports. These are 2.1B and we've got one HDMI 2.1B as well. So of course that can support four monitors up to 8K, so 7,680 by 4,320, or you can do up to 4K, 480 Hertz on the HDMI or 8K, 120 if you want to. And then you will need a beefy power supply for this. Recommended is 1,000 watt going to draw up to 600 peak load i'd personally go 1200 maybe 1500 then you've got a lot of headroom and your power supply fan won't spin as much either so we're now going to get this into the test system we'll do those all important tests talk to you about performance after when we come back and give you my overall thoughts as you can see it's since gone back i've got the tough 1490 in there at the moment but i've had time to put it through the usual benchmark suite in 1440p and 4k i've also had a 3d mark which you can download for free and compare to your own system to results here if you wish. The test system we're using here is the Intel 12900K on the Asus Z690 Hero. We've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. There's a Seagate Fire Cuda 530, one terabyte for storage. The power is an EVGA 1300 watt power supply. Cooling is the Corsair H170 Elite LCD and it's all in the Fantex Etho 2 Pro case. So let's start with the 3D Mark results as these really show the generational improvements between the 4090 and 5090. For the gaming results, I'm going to rattle through these, so feel free to pause and read them if you want to. But in 1440p, the results are very close together 
and some titles having negligible differences. The only real change we're going to see is when we move into 4K where the raw performance and increase in power at the 5090 really comes into view. Now I've also tested the wattage and unsurprisingly this pulled the most yet but if you're going to buy one of these I don't think you're really going to be likely bothered about how much power you're going to be using with it. And lastly for the charts we've also got the temperatures and unsurprisingly again the 5090 comes in as the coolest we've tested yet but that being said this is the only card in the chart that's got a 360 mil AO strapped to it. Now I think if you're going to buy one of these it would look better vertically mounted if you've got the space. It can be a little bit of a pain to fit the radiator if you're going to be using another AIO. My orientation, and this is pretty common, but I did have to flex the hoses at, and put those at the back of the case where I wanted to have them at the front for aesthetics, but that was the kind of limiting factor when I had a pre-installed AIO there anyway. I would recommend you get a case that's got a couple of 360 mounts, maybe one in the side. A dual chamber would be kind of the ideal thing and you've got multiple different places you can try it. And then just swap them around and see which works best. I think it really just depends on what CPU you're going to be using is if you have something really hot like the 4900K that's notoriously hot then you're likely going to give that the fresh air at the front of the case anyway and then the graphics card could have the heat that then goes through that rad. Now in terms of the sound from this very quiet it's certainly a lot quieter than a traditional GPU cooler but when you have the size of the 360 rad it just allows so much more area for cooling so those fans can run slower whereas the smaller fans will need to run so much faster to achieve the same thing. Now I did notice a little bit of coil wine with the card, nothing major and certainly nothing that would put me off buying one, that's if I had the money. It was more little things in menus and things, crisis, the menu in that brings it out in every card, but during gameplay I didn't really notice it. Now the current price for this card is around £2,700. You can find the occasional one come up on open box for around £1,999, so what the kind of MSRP is for the A5090. But if you want something that looks cool and is cool, or maybe you're just all about the quiet, as quiet of a system as possible, then it is a great option. From some initial testing that I've done against another 5090, it also seems to be on par in terms of speed. So if you don't need the radiator and cooling that this offers, then a normal cooler would just be a little bit easier for compatibility, not to mention cheaper as well. So I think that's going to be it for this one. I am leaving this as an unboxing and testing rather than a full review because I feel there are some bits that people might like to see for 5090, especially with the productivity aspect that that card offers with the AI and all that kind of stuff you can do with it. So if there's anything you would like to see when I get around to doing 5090 reviews in terms of productivity, like maybe editing or how it works with Blender and things like that, then do let me know down below and I'll make sure to add that in. But for now, this is going to be my little look at the Liquid Supreme from MSI, big thank you to them for sending it out for me to look at. I'll also leave the links in the description box below if you want to pick one up, if you're bored enough to be able to afford one. Thank you all for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Please get subscribed and ding the bell to see if you see any future content, and I'll see you all in the next one.